In years gone by, every single deep dive into Android has unearthed a wealth of new features, functions and alterations. So what's causing these Android updates over the past few years to seem like they're going to be smaller than ever? Well, small is a little bit subjective. From the perspective of most people, visual changes and functional changes are though becoming less and less prominent. Android is undergoing bigger changes beneath the surface that you probably weren't aware of. Prep work for future updates is happening and it doesn't seem to make a dent in those front facing UI or areas you'd ordinarily notice them. While wheels are in motion and AI will undoubtedly play a bigger part in Android, how do we get here and what will the future hold for our favorite OS? Well, the simple answer is that Android is a fully mature system at this point in time. Google has been the sole owner of Android since 2005, but it actually started off in scrappy fashion before that. The first device to ship with the OS installed was the HTC Dream in 2008. The iPhone 3G was already helping propel Apple to a massive market share, but the Dream helped lay the foundations for what we now know as Android. It was important to get this new S on as many devices as possible, but it led to major problems with fragmentation and OEMs and carriers being intent on putting their own spin on that core system. The need for standardization was crucial, and it's one of the reasons why we saw so much evolution in those early years. Since the launch of Project Treble in 2017, we've seen lots of improvements across every smartphone from practically every manufacturer. This is just a modular base for Android that speeds up that process of development by providing an almost complete version of the OS that you can tweak as necessary. We are in a much better place as far as Android the ecosystem is concerned. Most third party skins do start to offer similar key functions and mostly visual takes on what Google tends to lay out as the framework for Android with each yearly AOSP release. Since those early days, we've had a few inflection points for Android and the Lollipop update probably signifies this more than any other release. It introduced the world to material design with vibrant colors, bold typefaces and a completely flat interface that introduced clean animations. This was the biggest and most extensive change to how Android looked and felt back in November 2014. Yes, it is around about 10 years ago. It wasn't perfect, but Android needed a refresher at that particular time to move away from, I think what a lot of people probably won't quote me wrongly here is, it was a bit of a nerdy, hacky feel. This was iterated on for years until Android 10. By this point, things were starting to get a little bit stale. Go back and test drive an Android 11 powered device and you'll see what I mean, or even Android 10 powered device. Sure, I will say things are functional and there are some changes we'd love to re-reverted. Re the quick settings toggles were almost perfect back then, but the thing is, when Android 12 and the introduction of Material U came along in 2021, that was the biggest and most consequential inflection point, at least in the last few years. It offered the biggest departure from that old version of Android. From a pure user-facing perspective, this was a huge overhaul. And when you go back in time and look at what Android 12 brought to the table, it was very, very impressive. Of course, some things were removed, but huge new features were added. Since then, Android 13, 14, and 15 have come and gone, and each of those have favored under the hood changes rather than real functionality altering user-facing changes. Android 15 probably feels, well, it feels more like Android 12.5 to someone who isn't versed in the minutia of the OS like we are, or potentially you are. The thing is, changes just aren't as immediately noticeable now, but the groundwork has been laid for bigger things in the future. So why are these updates getting smaller, you're probably asking, as I haven't actually answered that yet. Well, one answer could be that we've already hit that peak smartphone era. When we look back at the form factor, the slab phone hasn't evolved too drastically in the past five or six years. It's still a touchscreen device with some cameras and an OS. Sure, we're starting to see more form factors, but the flip and fold style devices haven't really hit that mass appeal like regular slab phones. Android and iOS are also very mature at this point in time. I think you might want to look at desktop operating systems as a precursor example. They've barely changed since the 1980s. It's a display with a graphical interface, a pointer, and a keyboard input. Touchscreens have made headway in that ecosystem, but they aren't really great for true productivity, and that's where smartphones have filled the gap. Like desktop computing, I think our mobile operating systems have probably reached a plateau. We can only increase the quality of the components within our devices, better screens, better cameras, and therefore, as a result of those, a better overall experience. Another answer, though, could be that Android is becoming a lot more modular. Android 10 introduced a thing called Mainline, and this allows some system components to be altered or updated outside of the yearly release cadence. It also addressed some of the fragmentation issues seen in older versions because Google can bypass OEMs by pushing play system updates to keep your devices secure and safe. Mainline is just part of a bigger puzzle though. 
Google has also placed a greater emphasis on and relied more on Play service updates over the past few years. This major change is visible in features like Quick Share, which was formerly known as Nearby Share, and Theft Protection. You don't necessarily need to update your device to get access to these features. A Play service update is pushed, and you can access new functions without needing a full system OTA. If you didn't already know at this point in time, Pixel phones are the apex of Google's efforts with Android. In essence, these phones are becoming vehicles for Google's own OS skin. The Pixel lineup gets unique functions that you might get on other phones later down the line. Pixel Drops, formerly Pixel Feature Drops, also drop shipping new functions outside of huge yearly updates to these devices as well. They're stuffed to the brim and you might receive changes that alter the look and feel of your phone every three months, although it is worth noting that they're still not as big as those older Android releases. The only confusing aspect with those Pixel Drops though is the crossover from the QPR beta update cycle. And there's often a lot of overlap with the next platform release. So you may get something that was originally intended for the next OS version early as part of a pixel drop once Google has worked out the kinks. It's a little convoluted, but it means that again, some functionality breaks free of those massive yearly updates. My biggest problem here is that I think Google is chipping away at that old model of huge releases or huge changes with a big release. And while it does diminish the excitement somewhat, we end up with more bite-sized chunks rather than a huge deluge once per year. As I slightly alluded to earlier, given this is a mature platform, we're actually 17 years into the Android operating system. Yes, 17. The early years were full of iteration, implementation, and updates to that core experience as it was being built from the ground up. Now it feels more like refine, nip, tuck, and enhance. And one of the biggest benefits of choosing a phone today is that you can buy a phone or tablet from the likes of Samsung, OnePlus, Xiaomi, Oppo, and others, and have much more confidence that these OEMs will often offer support beyond just a few months, because that was the case way back in the day. Many are even offering extensive update schedules to match Google's impressive seven year update promise. So sure, not everyone is doing it as well, but the big players are really trying to improve their versions of Android with every release. It's also important to note that AOSP, while it is the core of all Android phones, is not actually what it once was. Google has been hard at work creating its own version of Android specifically to help differentiate the Pixel series from other hardware on the market because most of the true software innovation is behind us as well. Many once innovative functions are now available on practically every smartphone. For brands, unique apps are where they're seeing the boundaries being pushed. A great example of this is Samsung DeX. Not many Android makers have actually tackled a dedicated desktop mode, but we are starting to see a little bit more of that over the last few years. Samsung has just really led the charge with its own DeX protocol. On Pixel phones, there are functions as well, like Hold For Me, Call Screen, and a growing list of uh, options that aren't actually available on any other devices as yet. Every OEM is doing their own little apps or making their own little tweaks to help give their devices an edge. And it usually is separate to Android itself. The thing is, smartphones definitely peaked a long time ago and save that growing foldable phone space, we're seeing incremental updates across the board, even in that area already. Android 15 as an actual update mainly offers quality of life changes and enhancements to existing functions. Many of the features that were on the Pixel 9 are actually not locked into this latest update, rather they've been added functions locked to the hardware. To make matters worse, the Pixel 9 actually launched with last year's Android 14 release. It was practically identical to what you'd find on the Pixel 6, the Pixel 7, and the 8 series devices. Apart from an updated Pixel Weather app, plus Pixel Studio and Pixel Screenshots, it was practically the same. So what does the future hold? Well, you may have seen that Google is planning on bringing Android 16 to the table much earlier than usual, and that's a double-edged sword. The tech industry is pushing to integrate and add AI into more places, rightly or wrongly, and it wouldn't be a stretch to imagine that Android 16 could introduce more AI to the core operating system. Why is this relevant though? Well, it's here where I think we could see the biggest and boldest changes to Android in a number of years, and it could wipe that idea that Android updates are getting smaller out of the existence, basically. It poses another big question though. What does an AI integrated operating system actually look like? Well, we simply don't know at this stage, but it isn't hard to imagine AI being used to help create truly unique device experiences. Consider Material U for a second. This is Google's big play to make your phone your own. And imagine a Material U interface that acts and evolves based on things like prompts or custom widgets that can create on the fly or recreate on the fly with specific content and context absolutely intact. In theory, 
The possibilities are endless if it is integrated in the right way. The dream though is to ask something like Gemini to build an interface based on your own input or your prompts, at least as far as I'm concerned. It's this, or even if this is possible for instance, you wouldn't be using a basic framework for customization like we do now. It could be truly tailored to you and if this is something that might be in Android's future, the sheer volume of work required to rebuild the OS from the ground up to even allow such changes could, it could take years. If it does take a while for true AI integration into Android to come to fruition, then we could be in store for even more small updates, at least until a huge overhaul is ready for prime time. The moral of the story here is though that huge user facing changes just aren't the norm any longer.